Okay, so now let's uh, start the practical part and implementation of previously analyzed project. So, uh, and uh, we will use an STM32 cube ID tool for that. So let me start my cube IBTE. So it is here. And the first action is to start the project. So new, then STM32 project. It will take a time, it seems. Okay, so now we can select our target just by entering the part number STM32. I mean the microcontroller on the top of the Nucleo board STM32 L476RG. And indeed, here you can see the related command of the associated board, it is Nucleo L476RG. So let's highlight this microcontroller and then press next. So next step is to add a project name STM32L476 ATC, let's say Intel Interleaved and I select different than default location so maybe here and um, give me a moment please okay ADC interleaved it is here and let's say this subfolder of course you are free to select any subfolder for the project okay and finish So again, we need to wait for the project creation. Okay, so we have the project is opened now. And let's start configuration of our project. Maybe the first step is to enable the debug lines. So system core item and then sys peripheral. And within debug selection, let's select serial wire so here you can see PA13, PA14 lines to be active the lines are in green color okay then we need to add some debug output to our MCU application and the most uh, maybe not the most but quite useful channel for that is the UART we have UART or UART2 so, so I'm selecting the asynchronous mode for UART2 connected uh, on Nucleo board to the ST-Link debugger and one of the features of the ST-Link debugger it is a virtual COM port so we can redirect data from pins PA2 PA3 acting as a UART RX and TX UART2 RX and TX to the uh, virtual COM port and this way uh, we can observe data on the PC using any terminal. Let's keep the default parameters, so 115 kilobits per second, 8 bits character length without parity and one stop bit. Okay, so we have debug pins for the debugger, we have debug pins in order to redirect the printf output data stream then let's focus on the core activity of our application so the ADC and configuration of the analog to digital converters yeah but it would be practical to select the particular pin of the nucleo board please remember we are going to use fast channels of the ADC so let's see where are the fast channels in the datasheet so this is the datasheet here maybe I will magnify 
fast channels are PC0, PC1, PC2, PC3 and PA0. Then we can go to the Nucleo 64 description. This is user manual 1724. You can also find this drawing, this figure, within the blister of the Nucleo board. Let's say PA0. PA0 is here. So let's use, let's use PA0 pin for our application. It is connected to pin number 1 of CN8 or it is connected to pin number 28 of CN7. So PA0. Where is PA0 here? It is here and it is indeed connected to the ADC1 input 5 and ADC2 input 5 because in order to perform the dual ADC dual mode interleaved mode in particular we need to connect both ADCs input to the same pin okay so ADC1 let's select in 5 as a single ended so PA0 pin is in green and ADC2 in 5 single ended. Okay, so now PA0 is connected to the input 5 of ADC1 and ADC2. Let's come back to the ADC1 acting as a master ADC. So I can modify the screen a little bit. Okay, so in 5 is activated. Let's start from the parameter setting tab and from the mode setting. We want to configure the dual interleaved mode only here. We want to have DMA access, so DMA access enabled. Delay between two sampling phases, it is 3 clock, ADC clock cycles. Clock press color. That's the important point. We want to connect, we want to use the highest possible ADC clock, so synchronous clock mode divided by one. But let's see what is the synchronous clock value. So please switch to the clock configuration and we can see the system clock or HCLK is set to 4 MHz while the maximum value it is 80 MHz so let's change it just by entering here 80 MHz and tool automatically calculate the new settings okay so the new HCLK and CCLK clock value is set so we have MSI as an input or base frequency for a PLL unit here and 80 MHz as a result. Okay, then let's come back to the ADC settings. So we have 80 MHz synchronous clock connected to the ADC peripheral. Resolution 12 bits, it is okay. Continuous conversion mode, let's enable this because we need to or we want to continuously convert sample by sample as quick as possible. Then also we need to enable the DMA continuous requests. But it is currently impossible. Why? Because we need to configure the DMA. So let's add a channel. And please remember we are going to use common data register. So the data width is word. The data size is uh, uh, instead of the half word, the data size should be word. And let's keep mode as a normal, it is equivalent of single shot. So the transfer stops when the buffer will be full. The other option is a circular mode. 
OK, so let's come back to the parameter settings and enable DMA um, continuous requests. Let's keep external trigger conversion source as a software and let's configure our rank. So it is channel 5, but sampling time must be set to 6.5 ADC clock cycles. OK, that's all regarding ADC 1 and so it is our master. So regarding ADC 2 acting as a slave, it is already set as dual interleaved mode, DMA access mode enabled, delay between two sampling phases is 3 cycles, synchronous clock is divided by 1, so that's OK, continuous conversion enabled, DMA continuous request disabled because we don't have DMA channel assigned to ADC2. We have common data register. The only action on our side it is to configure the rank properly and we need the same sampling mode period, so 6.5 clock cycles. And that's all. We can generate the source code. OK, and let's start our coding. We are going to use printf function in order to send out to print out the user interface debug data, the application. So let's include the standard I.O. file. And as you remember, when we are using Cubemix to generate the source code, it is good practice, or I would say it is a must to put your user code between the code sections, otherwise the, the code will be deleted in case of regeneration of the source code. So for the include, the relevant section is here. OK. The next point, it is to define the ADC buffer size. So the definition private define is here. Sorry. And let's put here 20. Why 20? Because we want to acquire 40 samples. We have interleaved mode, so every transfer from the common data register means transfer of two ADCs data register. So, in fact, every item of the ADC buffer consists of two results. So, we need to multiply 20 by 2 and then we get 40 items of the ADC buffer. OK, we can save this. Then Let's define the variables, the user variables. And the relevant section is here, user code begin PV, private variables. So we have flag, ATC flag. This flag will be active just after the end of dual conversion, so just after the end of conversion of slave ADC and this flag will be set within the DMA end of transfer callback and the default value is of course reset. Then, and it is volatile because it will be modified within interrupt callback. The same for the variable i, we need some index variable and we need the ADC buffer. OK, the next point is to overwrite the default write function. Let's do it within the user code begin zero section. In fact, this overwrite of write underscore write function allows us to redirect the printf output data stream to the UART number 2 here. 
Okay, next step. It is important and it is practical hint for you that really first action when you are using ADC on the top of STM32 microcontroller it is to calibrate the ADC. We have two ADCs, so we need to calibrate ADC1 and ADC2. We have single-ended inputs for both. Then we can start our ADC conversion and the API for that it is HAL ADC EX because EX means extended because this function is related to the L4 family. The implementation of this function is related to L4 family. Multimode start. Multimode means that we are using more than one ADC while the ADC1 is a master ADC. So we need to point the master ADC, the buffer and the buffer size. The next action is to enable the multi-DMA mode and configure this mode as a one-shot here. So the parameters are ADC1 to 3 common. It informs the function that we, need. we are using the common data register at 12 or 10 bits resolution. Then the next action it is to disable half transfer complete of DMA interrupt. This is quite practical hint for you. When DMA is active in HAL library, we have automatically enabled two interrupts, DMA transfer complete and DMA HAL transfer complete. In our case, we would like to increase the performance of our application and there is no need for half transfer complete DMA from our application point of view. We, we don't have dual buffer solution. It is simple application. So it makes sense to disable the enabled by default half transfer DMA complete interrupt and this way save time, increase the performance of application. So the only interrupt from DMA side we need it is the DMA transfer complete. Okay, and then we can add some welcome string like application started. And that's all. And this is all the activity before the main loop. Calibration of the ADC, start of dual mode or multi-mode ADC conversion, configuration of the DMA transfer, so the MDMA mode, we are using single DMA channel, transferring data from common data register of ADC in one shot mode, some practical approach, disable of half transfer complete DMA interrupt in order to increase the application performance and then welcome string. So let's implement main loop. So I will copy all the main loop. It is quite simple and it is good practice to put the main loop within the user code section number three. As you can see, it is between the brackets of the while one loop. Okay, so what is behind? If ADC flag, so it means when ADC conversion is finished. We are printing some separation string, then we are printing out the ADC buffer, having in mind that LSB part of the word it is a master ADC data register and MSB part of the world it is a slave ADC 
data register. If you come back to the ADC EX multi-mode start DMA API and this buffer, ADC buffer, you can see that it is uint32 type buffer. So we have words in the buffer because of common data register. So we are printing out the content of the ADC buffer, having in mind the organization of the common data register of ADC. Then we are toggling the LED and then we can reset back the ADC flag and restart the DMA multi-mode ADC conversion, configure the MDMA mode and disable the half transfer complete. It seems I forgot to enable the GPIO pin for the LED, so I can do it and this way I can show you how to regenerate the source code. But before, let's finish our main.c modifications. So here is the ADC flag variable to be analyzed, but we didn't modify this variable yet within the source code. Let's do it now, and as I mentioned in the beginning, this variable is modified within the callback. So that I put, I have just put the callback within the user code section number four. This is the callback of the DMA ADC DMA transfer complete, and thanks to Hal. DMA transfer complete interrupt is linked to the ADC conversion complete callback. This is the power of the hardware abstraction layer and library. So the only action here is to set the ADC flag. That's all. Okay, so we can save. And then let's come back to the to our CubeMX and configure the relevant pin, it is PA5 for the GPIO, for the LED, sorry. So I need to set GPIO output and then regenerate the source code. And thanks to the fact that I have put all my source code within the related source code sections, I can still see my source code after regeneration. So this is for example the callback just added. This is the main loop here and the user code section 2. One more comment here. So here you can see the alternative solution for the above line. So you can use LL API in order to configure the multi-mode DMA or you can just write directly to the register using the related data structure. But let's keep the low layer library. This is equivalent. So let's try to build our application. Okay, and now we can start the debug session. And in the meantime, I will open the terminal. So once again, let's start the back session. Okay, so application just build it, uh, then we can start debug session. It is just finished, download verified successfully, so we can close the debug session as we are going to use terminal only in order to debug our application. So this is TerraTerm, let's modify the settings, starting from the font size to maximize the window, and then let's change the serial port Baldrade to 115, okay. Um, 
uh, okay, we need to establish a connection first, uh, looking for the ST Microelectronics Virtual COM port label here. Yeah, so it is working now, but it seems we need to maximize the size of the window in order to see all the buffer. Uh, so that's the, it was the reason for the for for the separation string here, uh, just to separate the following acquisitions. Okay, so we can see some noise external noise voltage. I will try to start the signal generator. Now, this is the application to control the signal generation on my side. So, it is sinus output signal, 500 kilohertz. So, the period is 2 microseconds. Amplitude is 1.5 volt. Offset is 1.5 volt. So, we have signal starting from 0 up to 3 volts. So, let's start and see the terminal output. So something has changed. Maybe let's stop the uh, session and copy the data to the scratchpad. So Control C. And now let's open the Excel. And paste the data to the Excel. Okay, and then we can try to insert the chart. Okay, and we see very nice sinus chart. So it is working. It is working. I going to come back for a moment to the slides and show you the analyze of this sinus chart because this is exactly the same here. Um, as you remember the output data rate or sampling data rate, the equivalent one for the uh, interleaved mode, it is 8 mega samples per second, what means 16 samples for 2 microseconds, because for 8 mega samples per second we have 125 nanoseconds per sample. If we would divide the period of the 500 kilohertz, uh, which is 2 microseconds, by the sampling period, we will get 16 samples for the period. So here we have 16 samples and just one period of the signal. So thank you for your attention.